It's the defending champions Cork against Kerry. The throw-in is coming up for you at five o'clock. Well, we had a draw last week. We've had so many draws between these two counties over the years, but many Cork fans feeling that perhaps a controversial, very late free, which has brought them back here today. We're joined as ever by Peter Canavan and also by Senan Connell. And Peter, if I could start with you, have Cork left this behind them by not winning down in Killarney last week? Well, you're sending a lot of Cork supporters outside and they're very bullish here today. They think that they actually played well and that they've got the measure of this Kerry team. I'm not so sure. Um, Kerry were very disjointed, especially for the first 40 minutes last week. And I can't see them playing as, as poor as that again. Plus the positional changes that, that Jack O'Connor has made for today, I think, will greatly benefit Kerry. So it's advantage Kerry for me going into the replay. But just and a lot of people are suggesting maybe Kerry are gone. They lost the three finals last year, Munster League, All-Ireland Final, not convincing last week. Have they perhaps gone past it as a team? I certainly wouldn't buy into the fact that uh, they're a team, they're an Asian team with a lot of mileage on the legs. I mean, this man here beside me was 35 when he won his last all earned and I know he hobbled on and off for a couple of minutes here and there. And I finals. was a natural, natural athlete. <laughs> yeah, natural, <laughs> natural soap. Um, but realistically, when we look at the team, if you take the two O'Shea's out, Tomas O'Shea and Darlow O'Shea, maybe Tom O'Sullivan and Tommy Griffin, the rest of the team is actually quite young. They're in their mid 20s, still coming to their peak. The likes of Declan O'Sullivan, uh, Gooch Cooper, they've been around a few years and we're just so used to seeing them, seeing them in uh, all earned semi finals, all earned finals that we think they're an Asian side. So. I don't think that's going to be a factor here today, you know, uh, it is going to be important to have the legs. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Kerry had a rib injury last week and uh, that prevented him from starting, so he's, he's starting in the corner for O'Connor. And what about Tommy Walsh though, how convinced are you that he will start? Well, I'm not convinced at all, the man was in a lot of pain going off last week, he had sprained his ankle, he had, he had carried an ankle injury into the game and I'll be very surprised if he's fit to start this week. Well, Kirk, we will have a late fitness test apparently in the last few moments they will make a decision. The half-back line then for Cork as well is another change here. Well, it's look, when we're looking at this, uh, the, it's, it's a key line when you look at the likes of Paul, Ga Paul Gavin taking a solve because they pick up a lot of break and ball. Noel O'Leary's after coming in there who actually performed quite well when he came in the last day for Jerry Spillane, so that, that's not a surprise to see him coming in there wing back. And Declan O'Sullivan in at Declan O'Sullivan played, he started corner forward the last game. He sat and Peter were watching him in the first half and he looked out of sorts in corner forward. He came into the game when he went out, wing, when he went out set forward so that's not a surprise either. No, Peter Darrow O'Shea came in after 11 minutes last week. How important is that he has Tommy Griffin beside him today? Well Tommy's uh, much more mobile than Michael Quirk and I think that's a good uh, move from Kerry's point of view. O'Connor and Murphy I was surprised in that they seemed to fade out of the game going into the last 10 minutes. Everybody thought O'Shea wouldn't have the legs. Darrow was going well in, in the last seven or eight minutes of the game so he's on from the start today so it'll be interesting to see if he's got the legs for the full 70 minutes. Now going into the Cork half forward line is the same as last week but there are changes in the Kerry half back line Senna. how important are those changes? Well, there, that's where the changes had to happen because the, the Cork half forward line had the half backs on the back foot because they played this running game. Paul Kerrigan and Pearson they have serious pace and Pat Kelly got in for two or three goal chances the last days. Aidan O'Mahony had to go into his natural position which is centre back and he has uh, two sweepers in beside him who should get on a lot of ball. And the decision from Cork and Peter is to play James Masters at full forward having been withdrawn so early last week. What do you make of that decision? I thought Coonan wouldn't have started Masters from the point of view that when the game did open last week um, in the last 20 minutes or so Cork weren't clinical up front and if Masters had been on when the game had slowed down a bit uh, I'm sure that he would have converted some of the chances so I'm surprised that he hadn't started uh, Cusson today. Okay, those are the teams who wait for the Tommy Walsh decision. The substitutes, both sides used all the substitutes last week. Senan, who has the better options on the bench here? Well, we were looking, Peter, I think we were looking at both sides. And just from a core point of view, we look at Nolan Neardy is obviously on there as well. But for me, you see, Colm O'Neill kicked the 45 the last day that, equal, that, that equalised the game and then it made it a draw. You know, with five minutes to go, we were probably a bit worried. But, you know, with, with time up, you know, we had the, you know, we had the game won. And, you know, just unfortunate maybe to lose out. So like, it's a total new game today. It's as if it's half time in the game. And, you know, I believe we have a great desire and a great hunger and hopefully that will be enough to push us home. Thanks very much for talking to us, Connor. Yeah. He hasn't performed well in, in big matches against Kerry. And, you know, we, we talked about it last week that uh, O'Sullivan would be happy enough with Masters uh, coming into full forward. Yet, you know, Masters was directly involved in, in two scores that, that Cork got uh, in the first 20 minutes last week. He was showing out in front and things were happening off him. So it, it was a plan that I would imagine that Connor Cunahan would have had on his head. If Masters is not on fire, he's going to take him off very With Cork. Be a lot more intensity, I expect there will be in the first 10 minutes of this game. So Kerry will be defending the uh, city end here at Porky Cueve in the first half. Sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Here we go again. With Cork uh, defending the Black Rock end here and straight away losing possession. Paul Galvin. 
an early touch for the man who does most of the fetching and gathering for Kerry. Linking up with Tommy Walsh, first test for his uh, troublesome ankle, Galvin, shooting on the turn, difficult angle. And the Cork supporters behind Alan Cork's goal will tell you all you need to know, that shot uh, travelling wide on uh, the left-hand side. So many fascinating matchups all around the field, and already, uh, Paul, there's been a little bit of movement here and there. Yes, the most obvious one is that uh, Graham Canty has gone to wing back to track Ty Canelli, uh, reflecting the influence that Canelli had on last week's game, and I expect Ty to have a much more bigger influence again today because his second championship game, he'll have got to the pitch of the game last week, and uh, I know he's certainly looking forward to having a big influence on this one. So John Miskela again in at centre back for Cork as that kick out is broken back in by Kerry and pulled on first time by Michael Shields he's driven that ball 70 or 80 yards deep into Kerry territory here's Tomas O'Shea it was his marauding run late on that led to the equaliser straight away he goes for a stroll down along the right hand side poor ball this is Ray Kerry playing in just his second game of championship football for Cork this evening took too much out of that ball though and easy for Mark O'Shea now Aidan O'Mahony, restored to number six, to Declan O'Sullivan, back on the 40 this evening. A much more familiar look about this Kerry team, and O'Sullivan doing what he does best. Now Brian Sheehan, little look at the goalposts, round the corner and over the bar. Vintage Kerry football, using the hand and the boot and finishing in great style. Yes, and it's noticeable early on. Kerry are much more direct than they were in the first five or seven minutes of the la last week's game. A great dispossession as Ray Kerry was going, soloing deep in into the Kerry defence that uh, created that opportunity. And Declan O'Sullivan on his game, his favourite position, centre half forward, running in, good right hand hand pass. And Brian Sheehan continuing where he left off last week with another great point. Point number six for Brian Sheehan in the uh, Munster Championship. Again, no clean possession, one from the kick out. Patrick Kelly in uh, doing the donkey work on the ground and winning his free and because Tomas O'Shea did not retreat quickly enough some extra yardage the run made by uh, Daniel Goulding trying to get away from Reedy Goulding looking for the spectacular score it just faded out at the last moment but that full forward line of uh, Goulding, Masters and O'Connor perpetual motion every time they play together constantly moving trying to drag the Kerry defenders out of position and for James Masters in particular imperative he makes a good start here lasted just uh, 25 minutes of the uh, drawn match before being taken off foul in the centre of the field by Tommy Griffin on uh, Alan O'Connor free taken by Paul Kerrigan again O'Connor switching uh, corners trying to confuse that Kerry full back line Mark O'Shea as always his shadow O'Connor needed support it comes from Paul Kerrigan trying to hold off Killian Young Young did well made himself big and uh, awkward and that took the sting out of that move and the Kerry defence uh, slam shut yes and Kerry defence doing very very well early on very intense and aggressive tackling, uh, forcing Cork to kick from the angles, under pressure, and a good start, certainly, and the Kerry defence on top at this stage. Well, we had uh, a couple of light showers about a, an hour before the throw-in here in Cork. Thankfully, they have uh, dissipated, and uh, nothing but blue skies overhead here at uh, Porky Cueve at the moment. Noel O'Leary paired up with Paul Galvin again this evening. They know each other very well at this stage. Well, that was a poor kick out from Dermot Murphy, trying to pick out Ty Kennelly over on that left-hand side. Possession, though, given away by Cork once more. Just the one score to talk about uh, in the first five minutes. That came from Brian Sheehan, as both teams feel their way into this match slowly but surely. Killian Young thought about going forward but closed down very quickly and uh, Cork pressing up on Kerry forcing them to make up their mind O'Mahony's picked out Sheehan again he's got the run on Ray Carey tight to the touchline Carey 
An awkward corner back, a sticky corner back, and he does really well to dispossess Sheehan and to use that ball. Caught late as he did so, and that was uh, neat and tidy from Carey, who has very, very little competitive senior football under his belt, but looked like a veteran there. Now Michael Shields powering out from the uh, Cork full back line to Miskela. Had to receive intensive treatment on a hamstring injury during the week, but showing no ill effects right now. He's deep inside the Cork, or the Kerry half, and still going. Pierce O'Neill picking out James Masters, but Pat McEnany, eagle eyed, spotted that James Masters was tugging Tom O'Sullivan, and I don't think anybody else saw that. Yes, and this, that was a wonderful dispossession just uh, by Ray Kerry. You can understand why uh, Conor Cunningham wanted him on the team. Legitimate dispossession while uh, Brian Sheehan was playing the ball, but Pat McEnany, you're certainly right, uh, Mike. Very eagle-eyed and uh, picked, uh, picked out that tug in the jersey very, very quickly. Well, one thing Pat McEnany didn't see, and I don't think uh, very many people did, was what happened here as Colm Cooper picks himself up off the ground. And Pat McEnany, in a no-nonsense frame of mind, tells everybody to just get on with it. Yeah, tremendous uh, referee, and uh, both sides uh, respect his decisions. Don't argue with them, because they know what will happen if they do. Possession back to Cork. Patrick Kelly lofting in the Gary Owen. O'Connor jumping with Mark O'Shea. There to pick up the pieces was Aidan O'Mahony. And dropping deep to help Declan O'Sullivan. Again, Kerry's half-forward line at the moment. Dropping deep to help out their defence to make up the numbers. Killian Young now to O'Sullivan, the playmaker, the man who pulls the strings. Very little movement inside, so Kerry forced to go across the field. O'Mahony, he's seen enough and lets the ball do the work. Looking for Walsh, there in front of Shields. Again, Pat McEnany blows his whistle very quickly. He felt that Michael Shields was fouling Tommy Walsh. Free into Kerry. Yes, a free into Kerry and uh... Aidan O'Mahony in the first uh, few minutes has kicked some very high quality foot passes from 40, 50 metres out and has found uh, his target in the, in the first seven minutes of this game. So far, uh, Tommy Walsh looking fit and well on the edge of the square for Kerry as Brian Sheehan sizes up this opportunity, kicking into the Black Rock end and making no mistake. Kerry extend their lead and much, much better from the uh, team that made such a bad start last Sunday. They have settled uh, the quicker here, Paul. Yes, and uh, good to see Tommy Walsh. He's been in the game two or three times so far and his ankle, troubled ankle, doesn't seem to be bothering him so far. So a line ball to Kerry. Colm Cooper thinking for a moment about the quick one. Eventually manages to find a teammate that was Ty Kennelly now Tomas O'Shea Cooper trying to peel away and make a gap for O'Shea Canty closing down the space very quickly ball on the carpet Pat McEnany letting it develop and eventually Cork clear their lines this is Graham Canty wearing six but playing at right half back to Paul Kerrigan Plenty of open space in front of him. The uh, sun shining onto his back as he drives past the tackle. Man inside was Noel O'Leary, but cut out by Tommy Griffin, who was honest enough to make the covering run, but Kerry have given away possession again, untypically. This is Donica O'Connor linking up with Masters, but uh, off the ball, two players tangling, Tommy Griffin, and uh, it looked like Alan O'Connor and that's the thing about Pat McEnany. He doesn't just watch the play, he watches what's going on around the play. And he is keeping a very tight rein on this match ball. Certainly is, and he's up with the play as well, and that's a tribute to his fitness also, because it's been played at a frenetic pace, uh, pace so far. Uh, Cork, every opportunity they get, they're running hard into the heart of the Kerry defence. And Kerry so far tracking them well, putting them under pressure. Uh, but it's hard to see that this level of pace and... Uh, High, high intense running that the Cork uh, team seem to be adopting as tactics can be continued for the whole game. 
So Donica O'Connor punishes the indiscretion. Tommy Griffin has been booked. And Cork opened their account after a little over 10 minutes. Their top scorer in the championship this summer. Now with a total of one goal and nine to his credit from a little over two matches. But uh, Tommy Griffin now heading into the final hour of this match with a yellow card hanging over him. Again, Jeremy Murphy driving that kick out down along the left-hand side, looking for Ty Kennelly. Declan O'Sullivan trying to hold off John Miskala, wins his free. And yard by yard, Kerry get into the cork half. Tommy Walsh forced to go to the flank to win this ball. Support from Darrow O'Shea playing his 76th championship game for Kerry this evening. Looking for Cooper. How did Anthony Lynch win that ball? Just seemed to pick the pocket of Colm Cooper. And driving out in inspirational style. Lynch, support coming from Paul Kerrigan. James Masters peeling away inside. The pass was overcooked up, and Jermot Murphy had to leave his goal quickly. Good goalkeeping. And now Darrow O'Shea will play ranging from end to end in this first quarter. Tommy Griffin watching as Ty Canelli drives this ball in. Again, it's broken away from the Kerry full forward line. Shields got the first touch. Lynch to Miskela. All very measured, all very composed back there, so far at least. Killian Young just letting that ball run behind him. And now Declan O'Sullivan. All very cagey as O'Sullivan goes for that familiar diagonal ball. Cooper and Lynch matching each other stride for stride. Lynch wins the second ball that's come into that corner, wins his free, and the core crowd on their feet. Yes, and it's uh, very evident that's three consecutive balls that have been kicked in. Two high balls, one low ball into the gooch, and all, in all three cases he was dispossessed. He lost possession. A little buzz of anticipation as Miskela drives forward. Dodges the first tackle, needs support. It comes from Dunica O'Connor. That ball just seemed to fall into his lap. Mark O'Shea watching his eyes and his feet. O'Connor from a very difficult angle. He struck it beautifully. Oh, that's a wonderful score from Dunica O'Connor. He had very little time, very little space, and he made it count level after 13 minutes. Yes, a wonderful individual point from uh, Donald O'Connor, but he can thank Anthony Lynch, who's having a stormer so far uh, in the first quarter of this game. Wonderful play, and uh, went on his left side. Donald went on his left side, tried to find an opening there, cut back onto his right foot. Great score. So the uh, Kerry lead wiped out, thanks to two points from Donald O'Connor. Darrow O'Shea and Nicholas Murphy climbing together. The break won by... Paddy Kelly from Ballincollig got through so much hard work last weekend. Driven in by Murphy. In around the house is Goulding. That was a smart save. Masters looking for a piece of it. Well, Cork should really have taken something from that attack. They leave empty-handed. But real danger for Kerry. Well, this game is starting to up a notch or two. After a cagey first 10 minutes, Tom O'Sullivan blocked by Pierce O'Neill and Alan O'Connor goes driving, looking for something, looking for Dunica O'Connor. Plenty of space down along the left-hand side. Loose man is James Masters. He's lost his marker, Tom O'Sullivan. Seemed to get caught in two minds there. Masters with the difficult kick over his shoulder and the umpires, after a little bit of consultation, a judge that to have floated just wide. Yes, this was a wonderful weighted kick. Thought he really got it just on the wrong side. It actually hit the post. He did very well. Daniel Goulding to control the ball. And uh, James Masters should have put that one over and certainly should have kicked the next opportunity he got. He probably took the wrong option, had an opportunity to kick the score. Uh, not that one, but the one following that, that, that last opportunity, but uh, turned outside and then kicked under pressure and kicked it wide. So a quarter of an hour gone. That was just Cork's second wide. Kerry just the one. Both teams being very economical. 
as Miskela, who's getting a lot of space at centre half back. This time, elects to go long. Goulding just telling Dunnick O'Connor to let it run. Goulding on his weaker side. What about that for a score? The naturally left footed Daniel Goulding had all the time in the world to stroke it over with his right and Cork lead for the first time. Yes, a great score. And the two corner forwards, Goulding and O'Connor, are making cross field runs and doing very well. But Cork have changed their tactics in the last five minutes. They're getting a lot of success out of the long ball. Could have got a goal. Great goal opportunity a couple of minutes ago. That was from another long ball, 40 minutes. So they're mixing up their game. They're running at Kerry. They're kicking long ball in. Kerry under a little bit of pressure at this stage. Jeremy Murphy caught that one on the meet, looking for Darrow O'Shea, but again, Nicholas Murphy content to break it to the wings, where it's picked up by Ty Kennelly. Running at Paul Kerrigan, scanning the horizon. He's caught that well. Dangerous ball for Alan Quirk. And with the sun in his eyes, Quirk does well. And Cork will now try and hit Kerry on the break with Alan O'Connor. Well, it certainly is a high-tempo championship match on what has become a very warm summer's evening. And we will have to just wait and see who can maintain this pace as Miskela, again, makes himself available to Ray Carey, the corner back. Look where he is. And now Paul Kerrigan. Goulding again, breaking off the shoulder of Porrick Reedy, making an angle. Daniel Goulding. Well, his confidence is high. He fancied a cut at that. It remains a one-point match, but that Cork full forward line, Paul, of Goulding, Masters and O'Connor looking very lively early doors. Yes, but I think the problems for Kerry are down around their own kind of half forward and full forward line. The last uh, four or five balls that have gone in to Gooch, uh, Anthony Lynch has won them, but interestingly enough, Tommy Walsh has been drifting out the field a little bit and when the Kerry midfield players look up, uh, they're only seeing Gooch inside and they put a few high balls in, so the game has been played more up in, in Kerry's half of the field for the last five minutes. Well, Alan O'Connor's uh, spectacular catch there allowing Cork a platform to build, but uh, Nicholas Murphy's pass struck much too firmly. But big Alan O'Connor in this just his second championship season is causing plenty of problems for Kerry. Standing six foot five inches tall and just one of the giants that Cork have around that area of the field. The others, Nicholas Murphy, Pierce O'Neill and Graham Canty there as well, of course, if needed. Murphy straining himself to get a fist to that ball and straight away Kerry on the back foot. Ty Kennelly takes a touch, no support uh, coming short. He's, instead, he goes looking for Declan O'Sullivan. John Miskela hanging out of him. And as always, the referee, not too far away, spotted what happened and nipped it in the bud very quickly. <laughs> yes, but again, you know, Ty, when he looked up, Ty Canelli, when he looked up, uh, he, he didn't see any movement from the inside forward line. And compare that with the Cork full forward line. They're making cross field runs into space all day so far. Kerry, inside forward line, not making as much, uh, not working as hard. So not for the first time in his uh, Kerry career, all eyes fall onto Brian Sheehan. Made his championship debut against Cork five years ago. This should be well within his range, and it had the distance, but not the accuracy. It remains a one-point game. Cork in front, and perhaps the chance for us to hear from the stands for the first time. And uh, hear the thoughts of Peter Canavan. Yes, that's right. I think Kerry certainly have started brightly. They're, they're up with the pace right from the start, but the Cork at full forward line are definitely posing problems. Masters actually playing, drifting out, playing on the 40, and leaving the space for the inside men who are caught in havoc. What a run by Shields. This is Pierce O'Neill. Could he do it again? Just wide. Whiskers away. Well, he's like a runaway train, Pierce O'Neill. And Shields 
Well, he can move too. Absolutely noticeable that in this particular occasion, almost a replica of last week, but he was pushed onto his left foot, probably not as comfortable on his left side, and uh, tried to put it over the bar uh, under a little bit of pressure. This narrowly went wide, but again, what we've seen is that time it was Michael Shields that gave him the pass inside the Kerry defence. Uh, Ray Carey has been up inside the Kerry defence as well. So the Cork full back line attacking incessantly, whereas the Kerry full back line are really working hard to stop the Cork full forward line making all those runs and getting the scores that they've got early on in this game. Well, that was uh, Cork's fifth wide of the match. But interestingly, they've won six of Kerry's last eight kickouts. And here they come again. Donegal O'Connor. That's much, much better. They're on fire inside this evening. Donegal O'Connor. Kicks his third point of the match, his second from play. He's in the mood. He certainly is in the mood, and uh, I'm just wondering if Jack O'Connor is thinking about any switches or any changes around the middle of the field, because in the last five minutes, Cork has certainly been very dominant, uh, putting a lot of pressure on uh, Tommy Griffin and Darrell O'Shea. The, those two players, lots of mileage in the legs. They're working hard to get back, but they certainly don't have the pace that some of the Cork players have, so maybe Jack O'Connor thinking of a possible substitution at this stage. Well, it's 14 and a half minutes since Kerry got their last score in this match. They have certainly dried up. Declan O'Sullivan now, again looking for Cooper, but once more Lynch read the intended pass, got a hand to it. And dare we say at this stage he has Cooper in his pocket, but you can never speak too soon. Now Michael Shields. Once again trying to slip out through a gap but he was closed very quickly Graham Canty taking a lot out of this ball that man Lynch there to help and eventually Cork get out of trouble again very neat and tidy Lynch once more to Miskala no sign of his marker Declan O'Sullivan left trailing in his wake Miskala trying to make up his mind decides to shoot and it's not a bad decision John Miskala has come forward time and again and kicks his first score. Three points is now the margin. Yes, and every opportunity, again, it was Lynch to Miskala, two defenders. Every opportunity when they turn over ball in the Kerry attack, the defenders are sprinting up the field, and I have to say the Kerry forwards are not chasing them at this stage. They clearly recognise that there's potentially lack of pace in that full Kerry forward line, and certainly at this stage, I think maybe Darren O'Sullivan could be looked at as an option because they do not have the pace to match the Cork defence at this stage. Well, certainly, uh, from our position here, it looks like there's a lack of endeavour. They do look lethargic. And much like uh, last Sunday's drawn match, Cork setting the pace and inflicting their game onto Kerry as Paul Galvin tests out Michael Shields. Fine take by Tommy Walsh. They need much more from the young full forward. That Gary Owen asking a lot of Nicholas Murphy, but he had the answer to the difficult question and here's Miskela again now Graham Canty he's had a quiet match so far just watching the likes of Miskela bombing forward well it's incredible Paul to watch uh, the last 10 or 15 minutes how Cork are in such complete control and uh, doing as they please as James Masters out in front of Tom O'Sullivan Kerry are on the ropes just now, but can Cork rack up a few more scores? Donegal O'Connor does well. Back to Paul Kerrigan again. The marking very loose. Kerrigan from a difficult angle. Can't make Kerry pay, but they are coming forward wave after wave after wave. Yeah, and, and passing ball into the forward line, not under a lot of pressure. In that case, that occasion, Graham Canty found James Masters with ease, Masters, a, a high ball into uh, Paul Kerrigan. We have an off-the-ball incident here. Well, we've got a straight red, incredibly off the ball, well off camera. Pat McEnany obviously saw what happened, reached straight into his back pocket and has shown Noel O'Leary a straight red card. An incredible sequence of play. Paul Galvin was the player on the ground. A straight red for Paul Galvin as well. Well, that is enough to take your breath away. 
everybody talking about that last uh, Cork attack. Then something happened off the ball, 70, 80 yards away. But Pat McEnany dealt with it quickly, decisively, and both teams are down to 14 men. Incredible, Paul. Incredible, but there's a history between those two players, and in reality, it's probably not that surprising. Uh, Cork will be absolutely infuriated. I would say Conor Coonan infuriated uh, that they've lost the player at this stage. I know Kerry have lost Galvin as well, but Cork, such dominance so far, will not want to have anything to have happened to disrupt the, their patterns of play at this stage. Well, how will that... Uh, affect the trend of this match we'll have to wait and see patrick kelly hammers that ball over the bar cork have made this first half their own they fell two points behind after seven minutes but since then they haven't looked back they've hit the last seven points of the match and kerry's heads are spinning kerry's heads are spinning and a couple of heads are down actually as well which is surprising for kerry but it's been incessant attack from Cork in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Incredible pace. And Kerry really struggling to keep up with them at this stage. So Cork now with a four-point cushion. And Kerry and Cork must try and uh, figure out how they get to half time with only 14 men each. Pat McEnany, a very experienced uh, official, dealing with that spat very quickly. But you can still hear the terraces and the stand down here below us humming with conversation after that sending off. So Cork in the driving seat in this replay. Paul Kerrigan, so much youth and pace in this Cork forward line, and Kerrigan takes both boxes, but he can't finish. Credit to Killian Young there, who stayed with Kerrigan. And between the wides and shots that have dropped short into the keeper's hands, Paul Cork should be much further in front. Yeah, and Kerry just hanging on by their finger fingernails at this stage. Killian Young did wonderfully well to track Paul Kelly, Kerrigan when he was kicking, put him under enough pressure uh, to kick the, so that the, the ball landed in the goalie's hands. Well, Kerry haven't had a score for uh, 20 minutes of this match, and they've made a change. And we talk about uh, the referee making a big call, Paul. What about this from Jack O'Connor? He's taking off his recognised free-taker, Brian Sheehan, and bringing in a completely different player in Darren O'Sullivan. Well, I'm not surprised that he's brought in Darren O'Sullivan because there's a severe lack of pace in the Kerry full forward line. They need somebody to be able to make runs into space and offer themselves as a target. But I am surprised that they have taken off Brian Sheehan because the recognised free taker is very important in this particular fixture. Colm Cooper trying to sneak in around the back and Pat McEnany again spotted a little tug on a jersey. Michael Shields it was who was impeding the run of uh, Tommy Walsh. He's just been shown a yellow card for one foul to Manny. So Michael Shields will now have to be on his best behaviour. But we've talked about the players that are having a good game and uh, are on their game this evening, Paul. But Pat McEnany has uh, been with this match every step of the way for the last uh, 28, 29-odd uh, minutes. No, it certainly has. And uh, he indicated, I didn't see the incident, the off-the-ball incident, but he indicated that it was an elbow from Galvin and I think a fist from, uh, from O'Leary. So... Uh, Two, if that happens, two justifiable um, red cards and uh, it'll certainly, if the game wasn't open at this stage, Michael will certainly open it up further because there'll be a lot more space uh, in the, uh, on the field from here on in. But Darren O'Sullivan immediately, he came, out, came off the bench, showed himself for the pass and Kerry got a point uh, from his kick inside. Well, uh, Colm Cooper, who's been living on scraps in this game, has opened his account after 29 minutes from a free Kerry just the one score from open play in this match that ironically came from Brian Sheehan after two minutes he's now sitting in the dugout Cork's lead back to three points they're dominating in terms of territory and possession but the lead looking a little slender as we head into the final five minutes of the first half again it's Miskela linking up with James Masters and once more it's that high ball to Test out the Kerry defence. Donegal O'Connor read the break perfectly. Back to Paul Kerrigan. 
He can kick off either foot, this time off the right, and over the bar. They just seem to be that step ahead of Kerry, thinking quicker on their feet, and Kerrigan buzzing around that forward line. Yes, Kerrigan getting on an awful lot of ball in this first half, but that came from the Cork tactic. Uh, Pierce O'Neill caught the kick out. The two midfielders sprinted to the sides. Pierce O'Neill ran down the middle, caught the kick out. All came from the training ground. So that was uh, Paul Kerrigan's first point of the match. And it leaves a little bit more daylight between the teams. Ty Kennelly getting through a lot of hard work over on that left-hand side. From also Shea bottled up, not for the first time. He's been pinned back in this first half, uh, Tomás O'Shea, being concerned with defensive duties as Tommy Walsh tries to set something in motion. Again, though, he's forced wide to win possession, away from the danger area. Killian Young, just one man to aim at, Colm Cooper. Anthony Lynch was there in front of him. Cooper with a little nudge. And if he was frustrated at this stage, Paul, you could... Uh, fully understand why getting no change out of Anthony Lynch yeah, no change and this has to be in the first uh, 30 minutes of this half this has to be one of the best defensive displays that we've seen from any player but Anthony Lynch has just put in a storming first uh, 30 minutes he's won every ball that's uh, that's gone in there and most of them are 50 50 balls and he's won them won them well but I think Kerry need to persist with the tactic of kicking ball into Tommy Walsh because with Michael Sheeds on a yellow card and Tommy Walsh on his game, they should be kicking everything into him at this stage, I think, just to put the Cork defence under pressure. Good football by Cork as uh, Nicholas Murphy falls to the ground. Late tackle, play on, says the referee. And now John Miskela, Kerry looking ragged and being forced deeper and deeper back into their own half. And they've also popped up a free, Darrow O'Shea fouling uh, John Miskela. And it would look like an awful lot of Kerry's problems are coming from the runs of uh, John Miskela. Now, a yellow card has just been shown to the Moss O'Shea for uh, his part in that last incident. But the boring runs of Cork centre-back John Miskela, Paul, a huge area of concern, surely, for Kerry. Absolutely, but around the middle of the field as well. Kerry are not, uh, are not competing at all around the middle of the field. They're working hard, chasing back but they're not winning primary possession. And, you know, with Seamus Scanlon, Michael Quirk, David Moran on the bench, Jack O'Connor will certainly be looking at, a, at an alternative there at this stage, I'm sure. Donica O'Connor maintains his 100% record from the place ball. He extends the Cork lead. And as you will have seen a moment ago, Tommaso O'Shea picking up that yellow card for the high tackle on Nicholas Murphy. But... Cork have been building slowly but surely throughout the National League, powering their way to the Division 2 title. And all the while with one eye on this Munster Championship. And their performance in the first half here has been something to behold as Kerry come looking for something to take with them into the dressing room at half time. And Ty Kennelly who decided to take a stroll across the field and see if he could find some space, did so. He's also kicked his first point of the match, and it just keeps Kerry in touch and that scoreboard ticking over. Well, Darrow won the last uh, ball in midfield, and Tig immediately sprinted away from, from Graham Canty. He's been working very, very hard in the first half. Canelli got quite a number of possessions and uh, took the responsibility and kicked a great point under a bit of pressure. So Kerry need that score and need probably a couple more before they go into the halftime break. So double scores at Porky Cueve as Pierce O'Neill gets himself a piece of the action and quickly gets the game moving again as we head towards first half stoppage time. We'll have at least two minutes of additional time as Donica O'Connor again proving as elusive as ever. Support from Patrick Kelly, Graham Canty breaking to his right but Canty touched that ball on the ground. Well, half-time probably can't come quick enough for Kerry, but I'm sure uh, Cork would be happy if this half just 
ran and ran. Oh yes, Cork have played tremendously well in the last 20 minutes and all based on uh, winning lots of primary possession and the breaks around the midfield and allowing their half-back line to attack at pace. But for once now, Cullum Cooper has a clear shot at the goals. It was curling, not just curling enough. It just sums up his evening so far. Yes, he's had a, he had a poor first half uh, in the drone game. He's certainly not in his game today, but uh, we write him off at our peril. We saw two magnificent points. One of the best points, uh, certainly, of the championship this year, scored last week. So Anthony Lynch will have to be vigilant for the full 70 minutes and whatever extra time. Well, certainly, if Kerry are going to dig themselves out of this hole, they will need the scores of Cullum Cooper to do it, surely. Tomas O'Shea. Barreling right through the centre. Hit hard but fair by Graham Canty. And that really was a statement of intent from the Cork captain. Thou shalt not pass Alan O'Connor now. Aware of the presence of Tommy Griffin. And popping it into space in front of Masters. All of the Cork forwards sucked across to the far side, but it might still work out. Here's Goulding. Has to go it alone. A little tug on his jersey as well. Porrick Reedy just couldn't resist the temptation. Goulding engineering that free. And Pat McEnany, by and large, going with the zero tolerance policy. Yes, there was a, certainly a tug on the jersey, no doubt about it. But a, co a couple of points to make on, this, on, on, on the last 10 minutes. James Masters is pulling the strings in the forward line, having a tremendous game, playing a little bit deep, winning ball popping little 15, 20 yard passes into the two boys inside. But also what's noticeable as well, when Cork players hit the ground in the tackle, they're quicker to react. Once they get hit or fall after getting a, getting a, a shoulder or hit the ground, much faster. They're up on their feet, they're gone 15, 20 metres before Kerry players are able to react. Well, that will be all for the first half here at Porky Cueve. Cork head to the dressing rooms with a spring in their step. They finish the first half on a high. Anthony Lynch and his defensive colleagues have given a master class in defensive play. They've restricted Kerry to minimal shots on goal. And there's the half-time score. Cork lead Kerry by nine points to four. Do rejoin us after this break for half-time analysis. Last week, late on, and had to come back. They're going to have to do it again this week. Nine points to four. Cork lead to Kerry with the Cork full forward line flying six points from the full forward line and dominating the possession 59% possession for Cork in the first half totally on top but of course we have also had a yellow card for Cork two for Kerry and a red card from each side let's briefly deal with that sending off Peter Canavan what happened? had Paul Galvin in his pocket at that stage Galvin wasn't a, a, a figure in the game whatsoever but it was clear that there was, a, I think it was an elbow possibly from Galvin that may have started it. And you can just about see that, that Noel O'Leary retaliated by, by giving him a, a punch in the ribs. And what was interesting about it, nobody complained. Pat McEnany dealt with it swiftly right away. There's no qualms, two men off, and, and that was it. I wouldn't mind, Peter. It's been an open game of football. You're not going to see as good a game of football all weekend. It's been very open and very clean up to that. Fernando Pierce, O'Neill and Aidan Manny have had a, a, a couple of little incidents off the ball, but nothing really serious. It's been very open, and you know that's definitely not what you'd expect Given to see. Given all the, the possession, half. after a lengthy delay, the Kerry team have been out. The Cork team are back. So let's go back to our commentary team of Paul Early and first Mike Finnerty. Well, perfect timing as uh, always. Cork uh, leaving Kerry out on the field for two or three minutes just to. Uh, I suppose leave them alone with their thoughts. Kerry have made that one change as uh, the lads were reflecting on there. David Moran in to partner Darrow O'Shea at midfield. Tommy Griffin has moved to centre back. Um, Aidan O'Mahony has moved across to wing back. And uh, Mark O'Shea is the player who's been withdrawn, suffering from a hamstring problem during the week. The attendance confirmed here at half time as being 30,270. So a little down on last weekend's drawn match, but much larger than what was expected. With 35 minutes left then in this Munster semi-final replay to decide who progresses to meet Limerick in the Munster final on the 5th of July. A match you can see here live on TV3, of course, with uh, 
Kerry playing into the city end in this second half. Here's Darren O'Sullivan, first chance to see him in full flight. Still he's going, and he's got his point. Well, that's the start that Kerry wanted and needed in this second half. And sometimes there's just no substitute for pace in championship football. Yes, and uh, he just slipped Ray Kerry. Ray Kerry's slight uh, misjudgment of pace there, but a wonderful point on the run. Just what Kerry needed. Half chance of a goal, but... Uh, It'll give Kerry a lot of confidence and give Darren O'Sullivan a lot of confidence. So the uh, Kerry captain kicks his sides, uh, just their third point from play of the match, in fact. And keeps them very much in contention. But they have an awful lot of improving to do. A wild swing by Tomas O'Shea there in possession one by Patrick Kelly, who's been hoovering up all the loose ball. Intercepted back there by David Moran. And now this is Ty Kennelly. Little look up to try and see where Cullum Cooper was. He was in behind Anthony Lynch. And once more, Lynch playing from the front and playing defiantly as Dunnick O'Connor goes out the field and runs into the corner where he usually hangs out. Player closest to him is David Moran. Loose man was James Masters, but the pass was miscued. And now Tommy Griffin started the match in the middle of the field and now standing sentry at centre back Declan O'Sullivan he spent most of this match so far chasing John Miskell and now he's got a chance to run at goal barnstorming run Darren O'Sullivan dummies away to his right Declan O'Sullivan kicks it high and over the bar much much better from Kerry they've hit the first two points of the half and they've got the bit firmly between their teeth and again both points scored from players with pace running at the Cork defence Obviously, it's a tactic that Jack O'Connor has spoken to them about at the start of the game. The long ball into Gooch hasn't been working, so maybe the message has been run at this Cork defence. Get the ball to our fast players. O'Sullivan, the two O'Sullivans. And they've opened up the Cork defence in the first few minutes of the second half. It'll give the players out the field a lot of heart. Well, that was uh, Declan O'Sullivan's first point of the match. Little scramble for possession over there on that far side. And the free won by Kerry. Is the tide starting to turn? David Moran to drive it in to Cooper, who just collides with Walsh. Just to stop his momentum, but he's been fouled in any event. Well, whatever Jack O'Connor said to his team at half-time, it is certainly ringing in their ears. They're mixing it up, running at Cork, trying to find Cooper. And slowly but surely, they're beginning to find the rhythm. Nice and easy from Cullum Cooper, and all of a sudden, the gap is back to just two points. Absolutely, a wonderful start from Kerry in this second half, and David Moran out the field has certainly had an impact in the first few minutes as well. Intercepted the ball, going deep into the, into the Cork attack. Got on a couple of balls earlier on. He's a big man, he's a wonderful, skillful player and has, as well, it's for, he's played with Tommy Walsh at minor level and at club level as well, so he's uh, got a great understanding with him, so good start for Kerry. So three points in a little over three minutes, and we've had a game on our hands once again at Porky Cueve, a match, of course, that started some 25 minutes late due to uh, crowd congestion, but it has been worth waiting for. Donnick O'Connor looked to be fouled by Tom O'Sullivan, and indeed he was. I think Pat McEnany was just waiting there to see if things would develop inside closer to the goal. They didn't. But it's a different Donnick O'Connor we're seeing this evening. Didn't score from play last Sunday. But with Mark O'Shea now off the Kerry team as well, Donnick O'Connor will feel that there could be some hay made and saved in this set. Uh, second half Daniel Goulding trying to block out the noise well it had plenty of uh, distance but didn't come back in enough for him that's Cork's seventh wide of this match and it's at times like this Paul you start to wonder will they rue these missed chances yes Cork sh should be able to score points like that Daniel Gooley is a very accurate free taker normally that was a bad miss and uh, but Kerry need to 
be a bit more disciplined in defence. It was a foolish free that uh, Thomas Sullivan gave away. No real danger inside, and uh, they will get punished if they continue to do that in the second half. Jeremy Murphy dropping that kick out down on top of David Moore, and Thomas O'Shea just released that ball before he was hit, and Darrow O'Shea goes driving forward. His 15th season playing senior inter-county football for Kerry, and he's lost none of that old style and swagger. On the periphery of the match throughout the first half, but when Kerry needed him and needed a score, he has stepped up to the plate again, and now all of a sudden we've got a one-point game. And Kerry are doing unto Cork what Cork did unto Kerry in the last 20 minutes of the first half, running, attacking, and at that occasion there was nobody chasing Darrell Shea. He had two opportunities. He could have given it to David Moran inside as well. So a superstar to the second half from Kerry. Cork on the rack a little bit. Well, the pendulum swinging one way and now firmly the other. Kerry have hit the last four points of this match. Tommy Walsh. What uh, ankle problem was the question we were all asking there as Walsh raced out onto that ball, but he had fouled Michael Shields at the beginning of his run. But by the looks of things, the Kerry medical team, supervised, of course, by this man, Jack O'Connor, have done a wonderful job on last year's Young Footballer of the Year, Tommy Walsh. As Alan Quirk comes out the field and decides to play a little bit of football himself into the sunshine that's now in the eyes of the Kerry defence, posing very few problems for Tom O'Sullivan, it seems. Now Tommy Griffin to Aidan O'Mahony, yet to really get into this game. And once more, a stop put to his gallop by a couple of corkmen. Paul Kerrigan, O'Connor making the diagonal run, pleading that he was fouled. Referee saw it the other way. Good defending by Killian Young. And the Cork crowd, as you'd expect, uh, not very pleased with that. No, and from here I thought it was the correct decision. I thought Donald O'Connor had actually slipped when he was running for the ball and had the hand behind holding, holding the defender, Killian Young, on that occasion. Graham Canty. Just a little look over his shoulder to see where Darrow O'Shea was. And the loose man, as always it seems, is John Miskela running into Declan O'Sullivan, though, who was lying in wait, put in the tackle. And Declan O'Sullivan, who's been chasing the shadow of John Miskela for much of this match, for once took the right option, waited for the run, and has just played his part and John Miskela getting a yellow card for that little ankle tap on the Kerry centre forward. Here's Miskela again. Robbed by Darren O'Sullivan. His pace now beginning to become more and more important. The Kerry crowd urging him to go forward. Declan O'Sullivan, he'd waited forward while Miskela went up for a wander. Here's Tommy Walsh to pull the trigger. Fine block and palmed away desperately by Nicholas Murphy. Well, for a change in this match, it's Cork, who are now uh, hanging on, so to speak. They still lead by a point, but this is a much different Kerry team. Oh, absolutely, and uh, a wonderful dispossession from Darren O'Sullivan. Took the ball off James Miskell as he was going forward, transferred it back. And Declan O'Sullivan probably should have taken a point. I thought it was a wrong option to give it to uh, Tommy Walsh because there were three defenders inside when he took the, the goal chance. He probably should have popped it over the bar and levelled the game, but a big kick now for David Moore, and he's a, normally a very accurate free-taker, but this is the pressure of a Munster semi-final. So in the absence of Brian Sheehan, who's back in the Kerry dugout, David Moore stands up to this kick and has nailed it. We are level at Porky Cueve. Almost 10 minutes into the second half, and no better time to hear the thoughts from the stands from Sen and Connell. So level at nine points apiece. And that kick from David Moran, I think, has just proved to one and all that nerves will not be an issue for the young man 
from the Kieran O'Rahilly's club. It certainly has been a long ten minutes for Cork at the start of this second half. They've been hit for five points without reply. Long ball in over the top, though, and O'Connor has stolen in behind, linking up with Goulding. Chance of a goal! It's a penalty! Daniel Goulding bundled over by poor Reedy, and for the second time in six days, we have a penalty in this monster championship fixture. Yes, and a beautiful weighted pass by Dunica. O'Connor, great vision, great perception to see the run. Been made by Goulding. It was no doubt it was a penalty. There was a little tug before that. And as he was about to kick it, he was pulled down. A certain penalty. But so far in the second half, Kerry forwards. We criticised them in the first half, but their hard tackling has contributed to five turnovers since the break by the Kerry forwards. A completely different Kerry team in the second half. A certain penalty. But now we await the outcome. Donica O'Connor against Dermot Murphy. This could be a defining moment. He's buried it with the help of the post. He's beaten Dermot Murphy. Cork have the first goal of what's turning into an epic match, and they're back in front again. Yes, a very well hit penalty, picked his spot. In off the post, kept it low. Very, very difficult for a goalkeeper to go down and to save those ones along the ground, the, the old daisy cutters, and it's worked for Cork. Against the run of play, we have to say, they're back in front. Well, it's been a good day for Donica O'Connor so far. He's hit a goal and four points now for Cork. And of all the goals he scored for his county, that surely could turn out to be one of the most important. Kerry now have to do it all over again. They must try and reel Cork back in once more. Once again, two big men climbing into the air, Alan O'Connor and David Moran. Pat McEnany feeling that uh, the Kerry man was more sinned against. But that goal from Donnick O'Connor into the Black Rock end here at Porky Cueve has brought this game to life. So many twists and turns. And we're not finished yet, not by a long shot. Over 20 minutes to go. Graham Canty penalised for picking that ball off the ground. Kerry are about to make a change and no major surprise that uh, Jack O'Connor is delving deep into his bag of tricks, Paul. He has to do something now. Uh, yes, he has, and um, Ed Noche is coming on. Some of the great Jacko on for Paulie Reedy, but I think Cork are going to in trouble around the middle of the field as well. Nicholas Murphy hobbling for the last five minutes or so, and I think they're going to have to make a change there. I think he might have an ankle injury. So Ed Noche in for his first taste of senior championship football and what a cauldron he's been thrown into as Goulding comes sprinting out onto that ball at high speed ahead of Tom O'Sullivan fouled as he did so and again that's twice in the exact same position that uh, Tom O'Sullivan has fouled Daniel Goulding the last time Daniel didn't find the range well here's that uh, change that Paul early predicted Nicholas Murphy having some ankle problems and Cork are bringing in number 22 Finton Gould came on at midfield against Waterford on the opening day and he like the rest of us watching Daniel Goulding chipping that ball gently over the crossbar to extend the Cork lead four clear points between them again and I suppose Paul over the next 20 minutes we're going to find out what exactly this Kerry team is made of well, absolutely. You know, a wonderful start from Kerry and, and hit by a sucker blow with that penalty and it's just given Cork a bit more life. They won the kick out after they got the penalty as well and got another point to go back four ahead. Now we'll see what's, what's in the Kerry tank at this stage. Tommy Walsh once more making himself available but once again confronted by the imposing figure of Shields. Now Darren O'Sullivan trying to use his pace and his size to burrow away through. Recycled to Darrow O'Shea. Dangerous ball, Cooper moving in underneath it. But cut out back there by none other than John Miskela. Well, we were all uh, expecting a free out to Cork there. It looked like Miskela had been fouled, but 
Pat McAdeney indicating there that the Cork defender was pulling on the arm of a, Cork, of a Kerry forward. Yes, and it's very clear. While Declan O'Sullivan might have put the hand in first, John Miskilla pulled the arm into him, and uh, Pat McAnini is around too long to get suckered by those uh, opportunistic, I suppose, gamesmanship situations that a lot of players get involved in nowadays. But uh, very vigilant, made the right decision. Well, Colm Cooper converts the free. That's his third point of the match they've all come from freeze and it means that there's just that clear goal between the teams again as we head towards the final quarter of this pulsating match again very little room for the midfielders to work with free to Cork and it's the informed Donica O'Connor that's uh, picked out but well blocked down by a combination of Killian Young and Aidan O'Mahony and with a little bit of help from Dara O'Shea they clear their lines here's Declan O'Sullivan after a very poor first half he has been more like his old self since half time Cooper with the layoff to Darren O'Sullivan once again he heads for that crossbar tracked by Ray Carey fouled in front of goal and for a stray comment the ball moved to right in front of the posts. Pat McEnany is in no mood for compromise. He's just shown a yellow card to Anthony Lynch. And what Pat says goes. Yes, no doubt about it. And uh, again, Darren O'Sullivan making that hard run right through the heart of the Kerry defence, or the Cork defence. They're struggling with his pace, sucked in the foul. It was going to be an easy point for Gooch, but a bit of dissension brought it straight in front of the goal and uh, a yellow card for Anthony Lynch. But again, what worked for Cork in the first half, the hard runners running through the middle of the Kerry defence is certainly working for Kerry in the second half. So with this match uh, balanced on a knife edge, once again, I think we can now hear from the stands from Sen and Connell. Yeah, two different Kerry teams we're seeing here in the second half. I'd say a lot of harsh words from Jack O'Connor uh, at half-time on his Kerry so on his Kerry side. Um, the game still in the melting pot. Sucker blow there with that penalty for Cork, but Kerry are far from bet here. And a good score from Gooch just to bring them back to two points again. Well, you'll just have uh, seen on your screen there confirmation of Kerry's latest change. Donica Wall, she's in off the bench to try and add some energy to this Kerry forward line. And here he is into the thick of the action straight away to Aidan O'Shea. Man outside is Tomas O'Shea. Kerry would seem to have got their second win now. The man who's been taken off the uh, Kerry team, Tommy Walsh, by the way. As Declan O'Sullivan, who's moved a little closer to goal, wins that ball, shoots on sight. And a rare Kerry wide. This game far from over. Yeah. A little bit of handbags down at the sideline. I don't think there was too much in that. Gooch was pushed away. He gave a little shoulder, shoulder to the chest of one of the Cork players. But uh, it's a very physical game, fast-paced physical game. But played, apart from the sending off in the first half, very much played within the rules. And as, to see Donica, Donica Walsh on, I thought he played very well in the first half the last day. And the drawn match scored two good points. Incredible work rate. Will run all day. Well, it sounded almost like a description of that man, Ty Kinelli. Again, trying to provide something for his inside line to work with. But once more, Cork get there first. And this is Finton Gould, the fresh legs of the substitute. Alan O'Connor peeling away to his right. Plenty of options inside. One of them is James Masters. He knows every nook and cranny of Corky Cueve. He's gone for the score and he has got it. An inspirational point from James Masters, his first of the match, but a crucial one. Cork lead by three again. Cork lead by three, and it came from a high ball in. They've just taken off Tommy Walsh. Kerry kicked a high ball in in front of two smaller players in the Kerry full forward line. They were beaten to it, ran down the field, and ended up with James Masters kicking a great point on his left. Well, Conor Cunahan has just brought in Paul O'Flynn 
uh, to his forward line. Paul Kerrigan has been withdrawn. Bo Flynn from the uh, Ballyclaw Club captained uh, Cork IT to the Sigerson Cup title earlier this year. Very highly rated footballer in this part of the world. And we'll get to see a glimpse of him in just a moment. Donica Walsh winning that break and setting David Moran away. Moran just, just swerved around the first tackle, but the finish was wild and wayward. Without the big man inside now, Kerry will have to tap into that famous plan B that Jack O'Connor spoke about last weekend. And he's made a change and a big change. Dar O'Shea being withdrawn after 56 minutes. Owen Brosnan dispatched from the bench. And he's doing his best to get things moving again, Paul. Yeah, and I can understand that as well. Fintan Gould has come on to midfield. He's a, he's a fresh, he's a young, he's a hard-running player. He's going to be marking Dara. Dara's going to be marking him. It's a big ask for Dara to be able to chase him for the last 15 minutes of the game. So I think it's a good move by Jack O'Connor to bring in fresh legs and the pace and the experience of Owen Brosnan at this stage. Owen Brosnan, very experienced campaigner, as is this man, James Masters. Donnick O'Connor standing in the pocket. Just didn't get a hold of that shot at all, though. He is uh, the go-to man inside, all right. Yes, it's been a very high-quality game, played with great intensity, but, you know, there have been a few poor misses. David, David Moore, a couple of moments ago, a couple of frees missed as well, and th that opportunity by Donnick O'Connor. You probably expect players at, at the highest level to be able to kick those scores. Interestingly, the Kerry full forward line is now made up of uh, Colin Cooper and Declan O'Sullivan. At the other end, a chance for Paul O'Flynn, a first chance. And what about that for a first impression? Well, as we said, they rate him very highly in the county of Cork, and that's just why. What a way to make your impact when you've just come off the bench. Four points now between the teams. Yes, that is very noticeable. A very fine point for Paul O'Flynn, but all the subs that have come on have made an impact. You know, it just shows the importance of having a really, really strong panel. And Cork, today, it's still dominating the midfield on, on, on their own kickouts. They've won 80% of their own kickouts and 60% of Kerry so far. So still on top in that vital area. That latest kickout won by Finton Gould, who's really settled into the match. O'Connor to Goulding, lovely layoff, thought about the point, he's going to go for the goal. The Timber just helping that one wide of the goal, so, so close. The Timber coming to Kerry's rescue. And what, what a golden opportunity to kill the game off. Same thing happened last week. They missed, what a wonderful opportunity. Just tried to blast it instead of trying to place it. He was under no pressure. And I wonder will Kerry respond from this because after Cork missed their goal chance and a couple of point chances last week, it gave Kerry the incentive and the impetus to go back up and draw the game. Remember, Cork led by five at half time. Now the margin is four. Michael Shields, well, he may be wearing number three, but he just loves to get forward. Man who spent uh, six months with Carlton in the uh, Australian rules circuit last year. He's come back. A bigger man, a stronger man, and he's a huge asset to Cork. And it was his industry that's won the free that presents this chance to Donica O'Connor, the accomplished marksman himself. Corky Cueve falling silent as O'Connor does what he is in there to do. Well, apart from patches here and there, Cork have been dominant in this match. And the scoreboard, probably at this stage, a fair reflection of how this game has panned out overall. Uh, no, undoubtedly, and it's, got a de it's deja vu. We were in this position last week. Cork were five points ahead of Kerry going into the last ten minutes of the game. We have the same again today, but it, it just looks like Cork have the bit between their teeth at the moment and have weathered that early Kerry storm. Well, there are... Ten minutes of normal time left. Ten minutes for Kerry to fight their way back into this game for a second time. Cullum Cooper, all alone and isolated, manages to thread that pass through. 
This is Aidan O'Shea. Trying to use his strength. Back to Darren O'Sullivan. The shot was always rising. But it keeps Kerry in the hunt. It keeps that scoreboard ticking over. And one thing we can be sure of, they will keep playing. They will stick to their principles until that final whistle sounds, whenever that is. Yes, and it was uh, Ty Canelli won the ball. Gooch found him out in the wing, tried to cut inside, found Darren O'Sullivan. Darren was having a fantastic second half. Went for the goal, I think, but the ball just rose off his, his foot over the bar. Keeps carrying the game. That was uh, Darren O'Sullivan's second point of this second half. As Donica Walsh mops up and feeds David Moran, the two substitutes combining. Alan O'Connor making Moran work hard for every inch and winning the free. Tremendous pressure from Cork and discipline too. As the free is pumped into the corner to Goulding. Slips away from Tom O'Sullivan. Picks his spot and strokes it over the bar. There is very little that Kerry can do about that. A few heads would seem to be down here and there. Because that is simply inspirational. Yes, and he's giving uh, Tom O'Sullivan a bit of a lesson. He's out in front of him all the time. He's won practically all the balls that have got into him in the second half. Aside from his uh, goal miss a few moments ago, he's having a wonderful second half. Showing for the ball every time Cork have the ball out around the middle of the field. Canty leading by example again this evening. The Cork captain to Fintan Gould. Huge, great gaps opening up in the Kerry defence. And Cork would look to have turned the corner. Their substitutes have all made big impacts. None more so than that man, Fintan Gould. Nobody coming out to put in the tackle. And he did not need to be asked twice. Yeah, tremendous player, hard-running player. Ever, since he's come on, he's got, gone through the centre of the Kerry defence a number of times. Great pass from Canty, wonderfully weighted hand pass. Didn't have to break his stride, kicked a great point on his left foot. So Cork very much in control as we tick into the final seven minutes of... Uh, this monster semi-final replay don't forget coming up on TV3 after this uh, game the Fantastic Four it will start at 10 past 7 that's the TV3 movie on uh, at 10 past 7 this evening following this monster semi-final replay it will have to be some movie to keep up with this match we have had drama intrigue and no shortage of entertainment since we threw in at around about 25 past five and now we're watching Kerry who have appeared in the last five All-Ireland finals hanging on for dear life Miskela there's another nail he has had some game John Miskela and to think he was a doubt for this match because of a hamstring injury well it all seems to be coming right again for Cork in the last few minutes of the game they're dominant around the middle, allowing the half-backs to make those searing runs forward deep into the Cork, into the Kerry defence. And Miskela scored a point in the first half, had a sticky patch in Declan O'Sullivan there for a while, but has come back into it in the last four or five minutes. Well, uh, Cork have outscored Kerry in this second half by 1-7 to 8 points. A lot of the damage done to Kerry in the first half, but credit to them, they fought their way back into this match with a real purple patch after half time but Cork carried on regardless kept to their game plan and at this stage are in the process of closing this game out here comes John Hayes another pacey forward Patrick Kelly is being taken off and Patrick Kelly got through some amount of work Paul this evening a phenomenal amount of work and uh you know, some of the unsung heroes of the Cork team, you know, the boys who are just keep chasing all day. Working hard off the ball. And Patrick Kelly did it last week, he did it again today, and Conor Cunahan will, will be delighted with his performance. He certainly will. His side, seven points in front just now. And certainly over the last couple of days, pundits and experts queuing up to predict that Cork would win this match. 
and they have shown just why and justified that faith with this performance. Okay. Playing keep ball now, Graham Canty inside to Michael Shields. There are a little under five minutes to go in this replay and Cork are looking every inch the genuine All-Ireland contenders many people feel they are. Here's Dunnock O'Connor. He's got a yard or two on Killian Young. The Cork crowd love this. Cheering every pass now. Gould to O'Connor again. He decides to have a shot. It's well wide. But on the face of things, it doesn't seem to be of huge consequence. Well, Kerry are playing their way out of defence and looking to play their way out of trouble. Here's Ty Kennelly, still full of running over on that far side. Graham Canty blocking his path to goal. The perfectly weighted pass towards Brosnan. Referee feels that that was a foul. Cork get the free. And I suppose at this stage, Paul, you start to wonder, are we watching the end of an era in some ways, much like we did back in 1987 when Cork laid down a marker that things would change in the province of Munster. Still early days, of course, in this year's championship, but this is a real statement of intent. Well, it is, but I think Cork have improved. You know, been improving 10% every year for the last three or four years, getting better. Clearly, the top players, the under-21 players, are coming through as well, and they have great, they have great depth on the bench as well. But uh, you're right, Kerry off, as I said, at, at our pearl. I think they have enough quality players to rebound and... And uh, a trip through the qualifiers might be just what they need to get some of those younger players uh, some game time. So I wouldn't just write them off just yet, Mike. Three minutes to go, Paul. Cork uh, in command. And time for you to announce your selection for man of the match from this replay. Well, I think it was a, it's a wonderful game of football. And uh, on the Kerry side, there's no doubt that uh, Ty Canelli. You know, worked awfully hard throughout the game, got an awful lot of ball. Declan O'Sullivan, or Darren O'Sullivan, when he came in in the second half, was magnificent. But, you know, on the Cork side, you could pick five or six players. John Miskello was tremendous. Uh, Pierce O'Neill, tremendous as well. And Anthony Lynch is my man of the match today for a phenomenal performance in the first half in particular in keeping uh, Gooch scoreless from play. And uh, magnificent performance from Anthony Lynch. He did it last week, but he was exceptional today. So Anthony Lynch is Paul Early's selection for man of the match. And uh, just something worth noting as well, another Lynch, Fiacre Lynch, has just come onto the Cork team. Interestingly, he played at full forward for the Cork junior team last weekend, scored two goals against Kerry in the Munster junior final and has been parachuted in to the senior squad on uh, the basis of that display. So he may well be a name and a face that we will see and hear much more about over the rest of this summer. Here's the man of the moment, though, Anthony Lynch. He has had one of those days. Donnick O'Connor now in the shadow of the stand. Well, it's all over, bar the pushing and the shoving and the shouting that will follow very soon. Don't forget, coming up after this game on TV3, the Saturday movie, The Fantastic Four. It will start at 10 past 7, slightly later than advertised due to the fact that this game started some 25 minutes late due to crowd congestion. We hoped, Paul, it wouldn't affect the kind of match we'd have. It most certainly hasn't. That delay, if anything, merely added to the whole drama, intrigue and, and the spectacle in general. Absolutely. And it's been a great contest between two very fine teams, great sporting teams, uh, wonderful football at times. Key turning point obviously was the goal, or the penalty in the second half. Kerry were on a roll at that stage, they had got the first five points in the second half, but against the run of play, Cork got the penalty, and it just gave them that little bit of extra incentive and boost to go on and win the game from there. And I think it knocked the stuffing a little bit out of Kerry at the time after putting a phenomenal first ten minutes in the, in the second half. The man chasing back here and covering is Colm O'Neill, who came into the game just a few moments ago as a blood sub for uh, Pierce O'Neill, and that tackle on Tommy Griffin. 
will be Colm O'Neill's last act of this match for now at the very least he's been uh, withdrawn again Pierce O'Neill back in the game as we're, we've just been told we'll have at least two minutes of additional time at the end of this game but unlike last Sunday it will probably not make an awful lot of a difference Cork have manoeuvred themselves into a winning position and show no sign of slipping up this time here's Goulding out in front of Tom O'Sullivan pulling that trigger and making it look very easy Corker finishing with a flourish they leave eight points between the sides and a wonderful point on his left foot he's really given a lesson in football in play and uh, Tom O'Sullivan is a, is a fine high quality defender but he met his match today and uh, the two corner forwards, Goulding and O'Connor, have worked very, very hard today and given the Cork players out the field great, great targets when they run into space. Well, five points for Daniel Goulding. Not a bad evening's work here at Corky Cueve. Not a bad dummy either from Michael Shields. Killian Young playing as diligently as ever to Ty Kennelly. Kerry now will have to go back to the drawing board of course as they prepare to face into the All-Ireland qualifiers that winding road that is the qualifiers. Here's Owen Brosnan kicking under pressure from Shields. Well the Cork fullback despite the eight point gap tracked Brosnan there every step Of course, these teams met three times in the championship last year. One win apiece, and that uh, draw in the All-Ireland semi-final. No doubt about the outcome this evening, though. And the referee, Pat McEnany, brings an end to this game. Cork have done it again. They've beaten Kerry in a replay here in Munster, and they've blown the championship wide open. Conor Cunahan will now lead his team into a Munster final against Limerick on the 5th of July, while Kerry are dispatched to the qualifiers for only the second time in seven seasons. Remember, the last time they took the scenic route, they won the All-Ireland. Tonight, though, is Cork's night, and you get the feeling that the summer is only starting for both of these teams. There is much, much more to come. The final scoreline from a sun-drenched Porky Cueve here in Cork City will make pleasant reading for the Cork supporters. They worked hard to put themselves into a winning position and once they got there, they never let it slip. Full-time scoreline, Cork, one goal and 17 points. Kerry, 12 points. Cork will play Limerick in the Munster final match you will see live here on TV3, that penalty making the